Hi there, it's Ginger Bell, and I am here today with Jamie Stafford with Innovative Appraisal Network. And we're fortunate that Jamie is both an appraiser and also works for an AMC, which is an appraisal management company. And so we're going to have a conversation with her today about what to look for in appraisals and also the role of an AMC. So Jamie, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So starting out, um, let's talk about AMCs in general because I know that's relatively new to our industry. Um, because of some legislation that's come down and some requirements. So what, do, what role does an AMC play um, as far as interacting with the appraiser and the loan originator or the lender? Well, I always like to look at it as a middleman. So we function in between the mortgage originator and the appraiser for the appraisal process. Right. We receive the appraisal order, we send it to the appraiser, and we do all of the talking in between so that the originators don't need to talk to appraisers. Right. So really, it's, it's adding that buffer then? The firewall. The firewall. The and wonderful. that's exactly what it's called, is <laughs> exactly. the firewall. And, and, you know, just as far as the purpose of that, um, why is that? Well, there were concerns in previous years when there was the housing collapse and all the problems in the market. They said that there was a lot of coercion on the sides of the originators towards the appraisers in making values higher than they actually were. Right. Whether or not that's true, doesn't matter. It is what it is now, and now our job is to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Right. So that's the role of the AMC. So now let's move into the role of the appraiser. And what is that? Well, how does an appraiser um, work through the transaction? Well, the appraiser determines the estimated market value. Okay. That is the basic gist. We look at the market, we use comparative sale analysis, and determine an estimation of value. Okay. And that's on both a purchase and a refinance, right? Correct. Okay. So when you're looking at that, you know, you have a purchase contract. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes that purchase price comes in at a certain price. Whereas the appraisal might come in maybe what, higher or lower? Either. Right. Or right on the knot, or right, right there. Or right on the knot, you just never know. So, so when you're looking at comparables then, what are the things that you're comparing? Well, some of the big indicators, the biggest, of course, is location. Okay. We want to try to stay close to where the subject is because it's usually the best indicator. Sure. You know, like houses right. will be around each other. Another big one would be um, condition. They need to be in similar condition, the subject and the comps, sure. or you know, you'll be adjusting for that. Um, some other things would be the style. You don't want to compare a town home to a detached home. Um, age, that's a big one. Um, lot size, things along those lines. Right. So really looking at the overall picture then of the entire house. Rather than little compares, details. Than little details. Yes. So in, in understanding appraisals, what would you say as a loan originator are the three most important things for them to know about appraisals? That it's an estimation. Okay. That is very important. There is more than one right answer and many appraisers will come in with different values. If you have two appraisals done, likelihood that they're the same value is very, very slim. So it's a little bit on kind of a, a personal subject to kind of a it's very uh, subjective. evaluation. It's subjective. Okay. I'll be honest about that. <laughs> um, and another probably important thing would be to know that it's based on sales, not listings. So um, when we look at the market, we want to look at sold properties, only things that have sold in the past six to 12 months usually. Right. Um, that's really important. We get a lot of, with disputes, people will bring in listings and call that a comp, but we can't put weight on a listing. Because a listing doesn't necessarily mean that's what it's going to sell for, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, and I guess another important thing about appraisals would be um, that a cost does not equal value. Okay. So if, say, they have a customer who just did $40,000 in upgrades to their kitchen, does not mean their house is going to value forty thousand dollars higher. Right. It's going Which to we be. see that on the, the home improvement shows, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they put forty thousand in, so now it's worth fifty thousand more. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work usually that it's way. a lot less. Really? You don't, yeah, okay. usually it is. Um, you won't get everything that you put into it. Right. Because you're using it. Right. And once it's like driving a car off the lot. It's already been used, you're gonna lose half the value. Right. So. Interesting. So when you're looking for um, a good loan originator and how they explain what you just talked about to one of their um, consumers or borrowers. 
what are the things that they should communicate and focus on when they're preparing that individual to have the appraiser come out? Um, I would say something really important is if there are repairs being done, okay, to get all that thing, all of those things done ahead of time. So get the repairs done before. Definitely, or any major cosmetic issues, okay. address them ahead of time, or they will be noted in the report. Right. Um, another thing is to know with FHA and USDA, there are specific guidelines that the appraiser is going to look for. Right. Um, so the property needs to make sure if there are stairs, there's handrails. If there's peeling paint, they're probably going to have to scrape and paint unless it's a newer home. Um, if there's any uneven ground, that needs to be addressed. Okay. Any safety concerns, you want to have those things thought about ahead of time or there will be another inspection. Right, safety and soundness, and especially for FHA, exactly. are critical. Exactly. Right. So, um, and you talked about USDA. So, can appraisals be different based on different loan programs? Yes, they can be. Because conventional, for example, a conventional loan, they won't always check, like appraisers are supposed to check the basements and attics and crawl spaces. Okay. But you don't always have to on conventional. You don't have to check in the attic. Some do, some don't, but you don't have to. Okay. FHA requires all inspection of every single room with photos. Right. So, you have to make sure that the homeowner's aware that every room needs to be accessed and Perfect. photos will be taken. Right. Good to know. <laughs> so, so it's important for them to know too in doing a particular loan type that there may be different requirements then for the appraisal yes. and to prepare their borrowers for that. Exactly. Okay. So in your opinion, what makes a superstar loan originator? I would say ones that don't take the customer's word for what the house is worth. Okay. They have to do some market research and not just basing it on estimates that they find out there online. You need to look at the sales and try to find comps to get an idea of what do you think the appraiser is going to use because that will give you an idea of the spread of value. Okay. So do some homework beforehand. Exactly. Okay. I would say that's the most crucial thing. So, so where would they do this kind of homework at? You can go on Zillow. Zillow okay. has this sold comp search option. Okay. So you can look, I don't know exactly if they do proximity, I use the MLS. But um, you can look um, in the zip code at the very least, look in the neighborhood, try to find very similar properties, same style, same condition, and that'll give you the idea of where the value will fall. It'll right. give you a range. Right. And help prepare their borrower for that as well, so it's not like a sticker shot kind of thing. Yeah, it gives you the low right. end too, so you know this is the worst case. Right. And plan accordingly. Right. Now, I know you've been involved in the industry for, for a long time, in spite of the fact of your young, youthful um, appearance, and I know um, it's so great to see individuals like you in the industry, and that's really what we're focusing on, obviously, in a lot of the training that we're doing as well. Um, but I know you have been in the industry for the past five years and seen the changes that we've gone through and with the HVCC and now with AIR and, and all the requirements with the AMCs. Mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what do you see as far as the industry where we're going to? Um, and you know, I know speaking as far as appraisers in general, um, where are you seeing as far as education requirements? Obviously there's more education requirements for loan originators and licensing. Are you seeing the same on the appraisal side? Definitely. Um, actually, I think just this past year, I don't know if it's in place in every state yet, but they are now requiring college education. Yes. Minimum two years of the associate's degree and a lot now are requiring four years. Right. Which is a lot because you have to go through a supervising period as well um, where you're working under another appraiser right. for at least two years in the field before you can even sit for the exam. Right. For the internship. Yeah. 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 So it's a lot. Um, why do you think that is? Well, you have to know what you're doing. You have to study right. the market. You need experience. It's the only way to really learn the market right. is by being in it, studying it, and doing appraisals all right. day long. Which is so important. Um, so why do lenders use a licensed appraisal, appraiser or AMC to complete an appraisal? Well, there are those automated methods out there where they give you a value estimate based on recent close sales. But okay. what those methods don't do are take into account very specific properties, is like aspects. Um, for example, if you have a detached home that's 100 years old, there might be a bunch of townhouses nearby, and that automated method will pull them as comps, but they're not. They're not really comps. Not so at all. So it's not a true comparison. Exactly. So you've got to go to the appraiser who knows the area, knows what they're looking at, and knows what type of comps you need to be looking for. Right. 
And you talk about the automated, that's AVM. So yes. if they're looking at something that they may hear from their lender or through testing, it's also called an AVM. And really it's just that, it's an automated value, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so what steps are involved that go into completing the Uniform Residential Appraisal Report? Oh, there's a lot of steps. From the time that I get the order from an AMC, I will call the homeowner, try to set up the appointment, and ask questions. So you got to find out how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, any updates, is there a basement, is it finished? All these different aspects so that you can go and try to do some comp searching. Because you have to do that ahead of time now because right. we do require original photos. So after we get all the comps selected, you pick probably five to ten. Then you go and do the inspection. And after the inspection, you'll know more. So the inspection includes measuring the home, taking all the interior and exteriors, and noting all the specific things wow. about the property. And then after you know exactly what you're dealing with, you can narrow your comps down. Then you go shoot those photos, come back to the office, and compile all the data. Wow. Sometimes you have to call the township, realtors, different officials to make sure zoning's accurate, there's no easements. So a lot of things do go into it, not right. just picking the sales. And a lot of time, too. Yes, I mean, a there's lot. a lot of detail that goes into it in doing the upfront research and being able to set the appointment in itself can be a challenge exactly. because people are busy, I know. Um, but then to go out and do all the measurements and everything, so there's a lot of time involved. And I think that's important, especially for new loan originators coming into the industry, to know that it's not something that can happen within a day or two days. It's sometimes, it really is a true five days. So when you're looking at a rush, um, that it, it's imperative to be able to work with a loan originator that is realistic in those time frames, right? Exactly. You right. have to know sometimes properties are complex. If they have something like a pool and there's no other comp but the pool, right. you got to try to find something to support an adjustment. Right. So it could take time. Sometimes there's a lot of research. You have to talk with other appraisers and get some feel. It can take a lot of time. Right. Or if they're dealing with a unique home as well. So maybe oh, very, they're yes. dealing like a log home. I mean, my goodness, how are you going to find those, right? You can, yeah, you can only use log home comps. Right. And so it's important. And they can be 15 miles away. No underwriter likes that. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. That's a long drive. Um, so talking about that and, and comps, how do you choose which comparables to use then? You want to find the things that are most similar. So. I like my focus usually is closeness and recent. Okay. That's why I try to get as many that are close and recent that are very similar in terms of condition, age, style, and lot size. Okay. If you can't find anything very similar, that's when it gets really challenging, and you'll have to extend the ma the radius. So then the proximity goes out. And then you have to start searching. And sometimes you're in different neighborhoods all together, and that's when it gets complex, and you right. really have to be careful and make sure you're doing a right. very good job on it. Well, and and that's important to look at too because. You know, you're doing the appraisal, and then the appraisal goes in, and the underwriter then looks at it, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're going to make sure that it makes sense. Yes. And so they're looking at the same information, but not having done all the research that the appraiser has done, correct? Exactly. So it's kind of like building a game of Clue, in a, in a way, mm -hmm. is to be able to, to pick everything you can to make... Um, a good valuation and to provide that evidence, if you will, to support that. Exactly. Okay. It's important to make sure that everything's documented in the report so that you can give the reader a really good idea, especially on those complex ones. Right. Understand why you had to go so far. Right. Understand why it's a difficult thing so they know why it took so long. Right. So we talked about the comparables and how you do that. How do you come up with the value? The value is multiple aspects. The leaning cause is the sales. So once you put all those sales in the grid and you start adjusting for the differences between the subject and these comparables. Okay. So like improvements, if one has a pool, one doesn't have a pool. And you look in the market to verify these adjustments. So if you have a house that's sold without a pool for $200,000 and you have a house that's sold with a pool for $205,000 and everything else is the same, that pool warrants a $5,000 adjustment. Right. Makes sense. When it's that simple. <laughs> it's never that simple. It's never that simple. <laughs> it's never that simple. Right. So usually it requires a lot more digging, more adjustments to figure out where everything's coming from, and then, you know, sometimes just reason and judgment. Right. But after we adjust for everything, there will be three bottom numbers on that page okay. of the adjusted range. Right. So you can kind of pick a number in between based on which comp is 
most similar. You put right. weight on certain comps, you know, you weigh them a little differently, and that's kind of how you reconcile right. the value. So, and, and that's to your point at the very beginning you talked about, it is still somewhat subjective yeah. to that, that weighing of everything. There's no um, algorithm to be able to come up with that value, and that's why the AVMs are not reliable, right? Yeah, regression is not always great. Right. And they it's, say we can't even use it unless we have 100% sure that that's accurate. Right. So a lot of appraisers will not use regression as a sole support for an adjustment. Right. Well, and, and the importance of the appraiser is really it's laying the foundation. It's um, providing that value and being able to support it with evidence mm -hmm. in order to build um, the, the case of, of being able to lend on that property. Because that's what the underwriter's relying on, that's what the lender is relying on. Um, so it's not just a matter of the credit, because obviously that's what the loan originator is looking at for the borrower for a qualification, but it's also the qualification of the house. Exactly. And the value. Exactly, and the appraiser wants to make sure that they're there for the bank. You right. know, they're representing the bank. They want them to see everything that could be wrong. Any safety hazard, they want to point it out right. because it's their money on the line. Exactly, which makes sense. And obviously why it's so important for appraisers to have the education and the expertise and uh, in building that is because it is so important. So um, we talked about uh, the value, the property, um, what are some of the things that can have the biggest impact on the value of the property? So if a loan originator is talking to a borrower and maybe they're thinking about doing some things to their house um, before they put it on the market, what would have the biggest impact on the value? Well, this does vary from market to market and you're going to see different values based on you know the different markets. But I would say overall, very generally, updates in the kitchen and the bathroom are going to sell for higher. Right. Yeah, that's just how it works because people don't want to go into a brand new home and have to do all that work. Right. So they'll pay more up front. That's always good. It doesn't mean you have to go and put $100,000 into the kitchen. There are little things you can do to make it look updated and you know, new appliances, new countertops, new cabinets. Right. You, know, you don't have to go completely crazy. Um, but that's a big one. Um, it's good to know that not every upgrade or update will result in value. So adding GLA might actually hurt, GLA gross living area. It could hurt if it's the largest home in the entire county. Right. They're it's not, not going to increase as much. It's not going to get, the ones that you can only adjust for as much as there is. Right. You know, if you only have a 4,000 square foot house to compare it to, they can't really adjust much higher. Right. So you have to know what's typical. You don't want to go as an over improvement. Right. And you have to keep in mind that location factors matter. If they're near train tracks or they're on a busy road, these things can hurt it. And you have to be thinking about that ahead of time so that you can prepare and the value in your head. Absolutely. Makes sense. Well, Jamie, thank you so much. We appreciate your expertise and your information. And so we want to thank Jamie Stafford from the Innovative Appraisal Network. And uh, today we talked about AMCs, their role, and the role of the appraiser. And really the best benefit for our loan originator is being able to understand and explain the role of the appraiser, what to look for in the appraisal for their borrowers, and obviously being able to support that value. So thank you so much.